Bless squad. Right, what's going on with y'all, man? It's your boy, Blessed Apples. I'll say to bless y'all with another video here on Blessed to Invest. And today, since school is fast approaching, uh, people have just started school. We're in the school season now. Summer is officially over. Not official yet, but basically when you get back at school, everybody knows your summer's, your summer's done. So today I want to talk about school and what you don't learn in school, because school offers a lot of things to students. They teach you how to do math. They teach you how to do reading. They teach you how to learn a second language. They teach you history. But there's a lot of critical things that school does not teach that you need for everyday life. And I want to discuss those with you all today. So before we get into it, make sure you spam a like on this video, spam the like button and also sub down below for more content like this. And let's get into it. Without further ado, let's go. All right. So the first thing that school does not teach that is absolutely critical is what we learn on this channel. They don't teach us about money. They don't teach us how to manage money. They don't teach us how to budget. They don't teach us how debt works and how to manage our debt and make sure we're living below our means and able to save money and, and invest for our future and have something in retirement. They don't plan for that. And I feel like this is one of those critical things that you go through school for maybe 18 years, 16 years, However long you're in school, if you go to high school, if you go further in education with college, all the extra master's, master's, doctor degree, all that stuff. You spend all this time in school to make money. The whole goal of school is to get you a job that you can make money at. But they don't teach you how to manage that money, which is absolutely crazy to me. And it's why a lot of people struggle with their bills. They struggle with finances. They're in a lot of credit card debt. And honestly, the way the American government is going today, the fact that people don't know how to manage money shows up in the American economy because our own government doesn't know how to manage money. They don't teach it in school to us. So the average American doesn't understand it. And then it follows suit uh, when you look at Congress and the American government, how we're in $30 trillion of debt because they don't know how to manage money. So this is one critical skill that will put you ahead of the crowd if you're able to learn how to manage money. And this is what school falls flat on. It doesn't teach you how to do that. So learn how to manage money. You're going to have to learn that outside of school. Honestly, I say it's more important than a lot of the other subjects that they teach you in school. History, you're going to need to know some history. You're going to need to know some science. But if you want to get rid of some of the science, get rid of some of the aggressive math, like the the, the algebra, the super technical algebra and the calculus, like who who's ever used trigonometry for anything? I am. I'm an engineering. Um, I have yet to touch a calculus formula. I, I've yet to touch a calculus formula. I don't do any calculus. Um, maybe a couple of formulas will pop up, but I have yet to do a derivative of anything. So um, the average Joe, if I'm not doing it as an engineer, I know a lot of y'all are not dealing with a lot of calculus formulas. So if that could transition more into money, that would be very beneficial. So learn money and you'll be straight. So next one we want to look at is communication skills and relationship skills. And this is something that you can learn while in school, but it doesn't directly show you how to do it. And you can see this in a lot of people that are just a little bit of socially awkward. They have issues connecting with people. They have issues communicating when they get up on skate stage, they have issues public speaking, they have issues expressing how they feel. And I feel like school, if you're in school for this long and you're so young when you get in school, you're like three, four years old, whenever you may have started, maybe a little younger, maybe a little older, you're starting at an age where you're learning to develop, you're learning to talk. You don't know every word in the in the language. You don't know every scenario. So you're just learning how to do these things. And if school set you up when you're three, four years old, it showed you how to communicate better. It showed you how to uh, manage relationships a lot better. Students could take these things home and it could help them. And then also when they're in school, they could interact with other students and be able to connect with them more, bond with them more. It would lead to better friendships, better relationships. You wouldn't have school shooters all over the place because they're, they're still mentally drained and don't know how to communicate and don't know how to effectively deal with issues. So having a communication uh, will put you ahead of almost everybody in school. 
One book that I recommend is How to Win Friends and Influence People. That is one book that has really propelled my communication skills because I know back in like middle school, late middle school, early high school, didn't have a lot of friends, didn't really talk to a lot of people. And I, I would consider myself like a little socially awkward where I just I wouldn't be able to talk, wouldn't be able to approach anybody. Uh, making friends was a challenge. I only really talked to anybody that really approached me and having that skill would have been super beneficial. So that's one thing school needs to add on, add communication and relationship skills. You're going to uh, help a lot of students there. But next one, very important. This one, they graze over a little bit, but this is health, wellness. And I also want to throw cooking in there, just a whole group of just health in general. A lot of the population is dealing with obesity. I believe it's like 40, 40 percent um, of the Americans are obese. And I I argue maybe 80 uh, percent of them are just not healthy at all. Even if you're not overweight, even if you're not 300 pounds, you may not be eating the right things. You may not be putting the right things in your in your stomach. And school grazes over this a little bit. Um, they talk about the overall health. They give you a couple of gym things. but I really think if they added a couple more classes, they added some cooking classes where they can teach students, OK, if you cook your vegetables this way or if you make this amount on your plate, if you add fish or rice or chicken or whatever uh, needs to be on your plate and show students how to correctly do that, um, we wouldn't be dealing with a lot of the obesity that we have today. Students would be able to pro would be able to make their own food so they wouldn't be buy buying processed food all the time. Um, they will understand a recipe book. They will come out at the age of 18 and be like, OK, I have a series of recipes I can go to uh, when I need to make something healthy. And they understand what healthy food looks like. On top of that, we do have gym classes. But if they could marry the two with the gym, the exercise and the cooking, I think school would be a lot better. And that's what school is missing out on. If you hit these three things, you're going to be ahead of almost everybody. If you get your money right. If you get your communication right, if you get your, your health, your food and cooking right, you're going to be ahead of 90 percent of the population here. So if school were to teach these things, we will be leaps and bounds above. Above everybody, we would see a new society and see like really people flourish and not suffer uh, because they can't think right. They can't they can't eat right. They're so sluggish and they're broke. So get those right school. Next one. We do want to look at. And this is an issue I had um, when I was in college. I was so scared of getting the wrong answer. I was so nervous about, OK, if I do this wrong, what's going to happen? If I do this wrong, what are the effects of that? And school doesn't show you that in life you need to learn how to fail. In school, it's only one right answer. It's either A, B, C or D. You have to memorize everything. You go to your calculus class. You got to memorize all the formulas. You got to memorize all the equations and all the crazy stuff that goes with that. But when you get out in the real world, it doesn't really work like that. It's more of finding the problem, figuring out the issue, failing, adjusting and figuring out, OK, how can I do this better? And that's one thing school doesn't teach you. It doesn't teach you how to fail. It doesn't teach you how to properly set yourself up, fail, adjust, fail, adjust, fail, adjust. And there's a book that I recommend for people. Uh, called Principles by Ray Dalio. He discusses this where uh, when he was building his business, it was a constant adjustment. He would think of a new idea, think of a hypothesis. He would try it. It would fail. But he would take what he learned from this particular um, test. So let's say he tried some type of trading strategy. It didn't work in this scenario, but maybe it worked in, in a bear market or something like that. And he would take that knowledge. He would grasp it. And then he would bring it around and try again. He would edit it, tweak it and create a new hypothesis off of that. If we could teach students how to fail and take what they learn from the failure and grow from it, we would have a society that be a lot easier where they're not so nervous to make a decision. They're so not nervous to make a move and they can figure out what they want to do with life, which transitions me into the very last one is goal setting. People in school don't really learn how to goal set. They don't really learn how to plan. And you can see this when students transition from high school to college. A lot of students don't really know what they want to do with life. 
They have, oh, maybe I want to do this. Maybe I want to do that. But school really sets you up where it really puts you on a one track schedule. It gives everybody the same curriculum. You have to learn the same math classes. You have to do the same reading courses. You got to go to the same uh, science classes and history classes. And it makes it a one fit all for everybody in the in the in the class, everybody in school. So when you're doing this, you don't really get an opportunity to figure out, OK, what do I want to do with life? And that's where a lot of students, when they go from high school to college, they do things like no major because they're just going to college just because they want to go because they people tell them they have to go to college. And if school will set you up a lot better, let's say at a younger age, maybe you've been to school a couple of years, you got your basics down. You say, OK, what do I want to do with life? What, what am I good at? What are my talents? What what where do I see myself in the next 10 years? If people could sit down in school and be like, OK. I like this. I enjoy this here. I enjoy. I enjoy working out or I enjoy uh, talking to people or I enjoy uh, drawing or whatever it may be, whatever interests you. And you were able to build on that. You were able to create ideas and you were able to build a model of how long it would take to create your perfect career or perfect business or perfect whatever you want to do in life. And you could set that up. And by the time you are 18, you already know what you want to do. You have an idea of what you want to do. You have some steps in place how to get there. And you're not just, OK, I'm going to college just because I'm going to college, because college is an expensive proposition. And just to have kids going out and spending forty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, one hundred thousand dollars on college when they're just kind of like, eh, I kind of want to do this. I'm really just going for the experience going because everybody's telling me to go. If we could do that in college and have them goal set. It'd be a lot easier for life and a lot easier for the students of today. So these are a couple of tips that um, school does not teach you. Um, if you can get these five things down, you are going to be ahead of everybody in your class. Get your money right. Learn how to manage money. Learn about taxes. Learn about how taxes work and how to pay the lowest taxes. Learn about your um, your health. Learn how to cook. Learn about your uh, communication style, learn about your relationships, learn how to build relationships, learn how bonding, bonding works in relationships, learn about goal setting. What do you want to do with life? Figure that out. And last but not least, also figure out how to fail. That's going to be very important in life, learning those five things and you're going to be straight. So that's going to wrap it up for the video. Knock these five things out. If you have any other ideas of things that they don't teach you in school, leave it down in the comment section down below. So a lot of the students of today can learn these skills and learn how to uh, be more prepared for life after school. But it's going to be the end of the video. Stay blessed. I'm going to see you next time on Blessed to the Best. Just to see tomorrow is a blessed sun. Stay prayed up is the message. Everything about a nigga blessed. Everything about a nigga blessed.